Hey traders, Parker here with an update for the sector rotation and uh, <clears throat> excuse me and my uh, sector rotation indicators. So for the most part, this is uh, what's going on with the S and P 500. You can see from the range box. Oops, let me close those things. You can see from the range box how the S and P 500 on a daily has hit these levels right here didn't quite make it up to this uh high right this upper high right here but you can see how it fell out of the range and then came back into the range hit the previous range high right here that if you look right here was support but now it's acting as resistance it came above it a little bit or the day actually opened up above it but then it um pushed back down below and you can see right now this bottom of this range is acting as support So <clears throat> this is what's going on in the market. Uh, a lot of uh, volatility today was created because of Fed Chair Powell. And you can see what happened, uh, especially once you started talking. The whole market just basically fell out. And then you see this pushback above because most people talk. Uh, listened to his stance and took it as hawkish but for the most part he was doing it more so of a warning that you know this could happen if this and if that so the market rebounded on out for that and you can see how it pushed back above it's stuck in this range from this high to this low on the five minute and it's just ranging here uh it tried to break above it over here but it still couldn't break above. It came back down to the previous range high from this high right here. And it's basically just sitting there. And um, not doing too much because we're going to the weekend. But for the most part, when we look over, over the weekly, it actually came. Did it come back? No, nah, I almost came back to the 431.73. So let me put those drawings back on, or I got to go back to this one right here. Let me add my drawings back on, and we're going to go and look at the uh, the futures. And let me get rid of those drawings. And we can see how the... Uh, <clears throat> For the futures market, it actually did hit this previous uh, range high right here. So we look, this is the range high that actually hit this high right here. And these are just, these lines right here are just extensions of the ranges uh, if they haven't been hit or touched. So you can see one down here as well. But for the most part, this is the futures market. And you can see right here, it pushed above here, but it's having the same trouble that it showed on the S&P 500. So let me put my lines we can, uh, back on here and let's get into what's going on in the market. Uh, other than that, uh, I need to go back to the spy. And when we get into the sector rotation, we can look from this new indicator right here, uh, sector percent change. And I have it set right now for 63, I believe. So I have a set for original. I have a set for 63. And the reason why I'm using an uh, average percent, I mean the percent change of 63 on a daily because there's 252 days in uh, that the stock market is open. A quarter of that is 63 days. So that's why I'm using 63. And we can see from our labels where everything is or how everything, everything is color coded to this label. So with the uh, S&P 500, for the this quarter from July, uh, not necessarily from July, but over a, a period of 63 days, uh, it's it's up. The S&P um, is up six futures is up 6.12 percent. This is the price for it, and this histogram, the green and the dark green and the red bars or whatever, represents the actual market or S&P 500 futures. <clears throat> All the lines represents all the other sectors. So we come over to energy. Energy is up 10% um, right now of these uh, on 63% day change. Its price is $87.59 and its relative, RTM stands for relative to market, relative to the S&P 500 futures 
is 4.64 percent so it's actually trading uh higher than the s p 500 by 4.64 percent and you can see real estate is trading uh relative to the market is negative 2.883 percent and you can see so on and so forth this is everything relative to the market you see staples on um, this white line right here represents staples relative to the market is trading 7.16 percent negative so healthcare student is negative as well in regards to the actual market uh, utilities is trading negatively and materials is po uh, 0.39 positive industrials three and technology is actually trading lower way lower uh, this bright uh, blue line right here is technology and you can see if we zoom in a little bit, it's actually trading beneath uh, the S&P 500. So this is looking at things from a quarterly basis. And uh, silico, silico uh, retail and finance. So if I want to look at things from, uh, from the point of view of an average, just to give us an average of what's going on. It just takes a second for everything to come back, repopulate. So this is the average of those 63 days. And you can see it. You may get a clear picture. But this is just the averages. And they reflect back here as well in the actual label, label, uh, labels. And if I were to change this for uh, to the year, you'll get a different uh Pro, uh, profile as well so every January everything starts back to zero and then we get we can get a better picture about what's going on now so we're looking over this year right here this is what a year started and we can still see that uh, energy I mean uh, technology is still up technology is still trading uh, way above the market so we come down here um, it's trading 34% uh, it's still th up 34, 34.14%. And relative to the S&P 500 for the year, it's 20.83% um, 20, 20, 20 higher than the uh, S&P 500 futures. And that's how um, this sector rotation uh, indicator actually works. And you can see right here, I have these boundaries. You have the zero. You have this. This just represents 10%. This represents 10%, negative 10% right there. And you wanted to see a, a gauge how things were going uh, for the market and, or against the S&P 500. You just come here and just look at this. and Or you can actually just go to the different uh, charts for it. But this is, uh, this is just like a snapshot or a visual aid of what's going on, especially uh, relative to the S&P 500. So we have a staple or, or cyclical, cyclical still up. Um, they are up. 13.42% above the market and no that's not cyclicals so technology and cyclicals are still outpacing the overall S&P 500 uh, futures market you can see um, this for the year cyclicals is up 26.73% and you can see how it's still uh, pointing in the up direction yeah it came down a little bit but it's still up same situation with technology as well. They're still up 34.14%. Uh, and we can come back down here to our RSI sector rotation. And we can get an identifier of somewhat like relative strength. So I have it set for 21 or I could change to 63 to look over the uh, relative strength of the... Uh, On a, over the quarter quarterly just based off of uh <clears throat> just based off of the quarter quarterly uh relative strength and you can see everything i'm looking for things the ones are below 50 so you got utilities and staples for the 63 um average for the uh, rsi on those who are below 48 Everything else is above 50, and if we pushed it, which you probably wouldn't normally do, to 252, let 
It may not even come up. I thought I had this on oh, five years. No, I actually had it on two years. So we're just gonna push it back to um twenty one and we'll look at it from there. So we can see all of these uh, the ones that are oversold is utilities is oversold, uh, materials is oversold, uh, retail is just basically hanging on. If we're looking at over a twenty-one day average of uh, relative strength, but our strongest is still energy. Energy is still the strongest over the uh, over this twenty-one day uh, RSI RSI sector rotation over a twenty-one day period. Everything else is below fifty. Uh, even the S and P, even the S and P five hundred is below fifty. It's thirty eight. So this would be the actual S, uh, RSI for those. So if I wanted to change it to how a lot of people use over this fourteen day period, you still see that uh, S and P five hundred is still below fifty. Real estate below 50, stables below 50, utilities it's below 50, but it's coming up. Uh, energy is still the leader, uh, financials, all these different ones. But for the most part, those are the two indicators I want to introduce you to and uh, show you how I will use those two. So we'll just put this uh, sector rotation. Uh, and like I said, this is looking over everything for the whole entire year. And everything is color. All these lines are color coded to those lines. So let's get that off and let's take a look around the market, especially with those uh, sectors. So XLK is the first one I want to go look at. And this is the technology one. Um, <clears throat> This is technology, and it actually hit this second line down here. I think that's coming from the weekly right here. So technology is trying to rebound, but if you can look right here, you can consider this a high wave candle. It still doesn't have a direction. Everything pretty much started off as an inside day indicator. I mean, inside day bars. The high and the low were originally inside these uh this past candle, which is a bearish engulfing candle, which this high and this low overtook the uh the high and low of the previous bar and this whole entire bar, the body of the bar overtook or um eclipsed the whole entire previous bar. So you could be looking at another move down, even though you got this pushed up right here, but it's hanging on to this uh or it's respecting this um, range bottom right here that's marked out by the indicator. So we go to one of the lower averages. So this is what it looked like on a 15 minute. And this is what we got, got today. We got this bounce on the 78.6 field. And this is what it looks like on a weekly. And... <clears throat> So it still doesn't look very well on a weekly either. And we can see for this uh, week, this on average of 13 weeks, I believe that's how I have to say it. Uh, there's been 10%, uh, negative 0.77% selling pressure in this stock, or at least over the uh, 13 weeks. And one look over the monthly, and I have a set for three months. It's 26.94%. And this this is my relative uh, buy sell pressure diff relative uh, volume indicator. And that's the information that you're getting from these labels right here. And these labels are based off the difference of in the candles. The labels are based off of the candle formations and the candle formations over the average multiplied by the uh, volume. So this is XLK and we can look right here. This bar, 46% of this was buying on this bar right here versus 
whatever it, uh, 100 times, 100 minus 46 is. So probably six, 64% of uh, selling. I mean, uh, yeah, <laughs> of the opposite. So for the most part, you can see right here, uh, it's average on the 21 day period is still negative uh, 5.4. And if you look at it on the 13, uh, 13 week, it's the same from information that we got from our uh, on our weekly. So we can go to the next sector. Uh, I want to say, uh, let's say financials XLL. And you can see how it's trading within this uh, triangle right here. It looks like an ascending triangle. So we could get a bounce or you could be looking at the actual bounce from this area right here to another bounce up here. But it's still trading at the lows at this lower end of, of this area right here. So it's just bouncing up or just ranging right here. But... Uh, <clears throat> It's still not looking very healthy, especially if you look at our price and volume average uh, direction on this uh, line right here. And I think I had to set for 21 days. So this is 21 days worth of information. Uh, it kind of, the 61.8 field was kind of acting as resistance, especially after they fell out this cliff right here. Yeah, that's a gap. So. But with these high wicks right here, and this is kind of like a spinner top, it still doesn't know. So it's respecting the the upper half of this box right here, this 61%, 61.8% box high right here. And uh, it may come back down here, but we don't know. We just have to wait till next week. But uh, energy has been one of our, uh, no, this is financial. Financial has been one of our weaker sectors. You can see still it's a spinning top even on the weekly as well. So next one, we can go look at the XLB and that is materials. Almost the same indication what it was on the um, financials. So we can go to the daily and look at what's going on. It actually pushed the back above into this area, but it couldn't do it. Got rejected. And right now it's really respecting the uh twenty-one two one point four field. This uh top of this box right here. So it's respecting this and also this fifty percent mark for this range as well. So we can go look. This is what it did on daily, and basically daily, I'm I'm not necessarily going down these lower time frames, because basically all going to mirror what the S and P 500 did once uh, Fairchild Powell started talking. So we can go to the consumer discretionary. So XLY, and it was up on a day as well, but its overall weekly chart is still facing this lower down uh, half range right here but it did make it up to this prior area resistance but it still got rejected but it's hanging out above 50 percent of this range box that it was created and it's 78.6 field on a weekly and we come back to the daily and it's respecting the lower part of this range box as well you can see where it broke out right here with this triangle and it broke above this previous range high, uh, yeah, extensions. But uh, let's see that one time. Yeah, it's just waving up and down. So we don't know, it may possibly come back down here to that previous range high. So let's go look at energy. Same situation, spinning top. It's, it's not sure about what direction it's going to go into. And you can see it's respecting this previous high right here, this uh, white line right there. And on the weekly, it's a red candle. And it's stuck within this range. 
I might get rid of the drawings so we can see a little bit better. But for the most part, it uh created this range back here. Uh, what day is this? 7 18, uh, 22, 2020, July 22. Yeah. And it's been in this range this whole entire time over this 13 weeks. And that's pretty much how energy has been playing. Energy is one of the stronger sectors. You can see um, opposed to the opposite the other in, um, sectors, energy is up while the, all those are down. So that's why a lot of people are saying look for plays in energy because it, it looks the healthiest over the uh, other sectors. So let me put those drawings back on because they're based off the day and weekly. And we come over to utilities, XLU. And you can see right here, still, it's, it's in the lower half of this range as well. And it actually broke down below while all these other lows right here were um, bouncing off of this prior range bottom right here. And this candle, or this red candle right here, actually broke below. And this green candle seemed like it's just stuck right there below this range bottom and this um, um, Fibonacci level 2140. And once we go out, XLU still looks better than a lot of some of the other ones. It's still trading at a relatively high compared to, um, what was it, the XLB, the materials. So that's what it looks like on a weekly. And we come over to the daily. We can see the same situation. Uh, it was respecting this level right here on uh, each one of those bounces and it finally broke so it just stuck it right there that ball. and if we come over to XLV was one of the healthy ones too and you can see how it's trading within this same triangle from this high and this low and if I were to go ahead and just get rid of the drawings, clear those drawing sets out, we can actually see what's happening on the range box. <clears throat> and here are those extensions. And we're sitting right here, right on this 50 line of this range that uh, found between here and here. And we go over to the weekly. You can see it all it's doing is just consolidating up and down, up and down, up and down. So it's not doing too much, but it comes back down to this area right here, this previous range low for the weekly. And it came back up to the previous range high. And you can see how it's just in this area right here, just waiting and almost in this waiting pattern of just ranging up and down. And it pretty much did the same thing everything else did. Once a uh, Fed Chair Powell started talking, if uh, I can get to that five minute chart, there we go. Drop down, push back above. Drop right back into this little area right here, this pocket of this field area, and it pushed back above. I think I got rid of those drawings on the day gonna put those drawings back on here so that's XLV or healthcare and we can go and look at uh, XLP consumer staples let me get rid of the lines I drew out so we can get a better picture of what's going on and staples is actually breaking through or actually broke breach right here and came back into the range on the daily but uh, on average uh, it's below uh, 21 day period average and the volume is increasing but over the uh, weekly it's been 10 percent average buying uh, pressure when I say buying, it's buying and selling pressure. 
And that's what you're saying. So, I don't know. It's, uh, Staples. Could be something to pay attention to or be looking over. It's still up, but for the most part, but it's just trading within this uh, range. You can almost look at 81 to uh, 66. And I can get that on the range box. I would just have to increase it um, to probably 50. That's the only way uh, I would look at that. What is this? I should have been 13. And we look at it on the range box and we put it in 50. That would be the whole entire year. You pretty much get that. But I look at things on the week on the 13 just because of the quarterly. And that's basically what you're getting right here. But I like to look at things on the quarterly. So that's one of the reasons that's the reason why I keep it at 13. And if you don't know what I mean by quarterly, there's 52 weeks, but their stock market's only open two, 252 days, divided right by five, and you get 50 times 0.25, and that gives you 12.6, you round up to 13. And that's kind of sort of gives you your quarterly average. So that's XLP. Let me put my lines back. And we can see XLI. It's trading within this range right here on a daily, but it actually rebounded more than a lot of other ones. And we look at a weekly, 14.2% uh, buying pressure still in there. And this bar is over 53.75% uh, buying pressure. So, it's still below its 21 day average. That's what this line represents. And volume is increasing in this area. So look for a push above 107. But it looks good, especially when you compare it to some of the other ones. This uptrend and ranging. You can see right here uptrend, ranger. Uptrend, right? You can see how it's ranging now. So depending on what higher the markets go, I would probably expect a rebound in this stock, right? I mean, this uh, in, uh, sector. But it looks good, bro. Pull it back to 61 possibly push up and let's go look at the NQ NASDAQ uh, 100 let's zoom in and let me get rid of my lines for the moment on a daily 21 day period, the range box is actually trading within this lower range box right here. Same situation, is it's just trading within this new range area or between these field levels. So almost at the 50 and then this uh, lower part of this range box right here. And let's go to, this is what happened on a day. And this is just my indicator without the uh, volume bars, relative volume bars being pushed up. And what the other thing I added to the indicator was uh, this average, but the average is taking the average of the relative uh, volume average. So volume divided by uh, its average, and then you got this average of that. Well, for the most part, what makes it special is um, the color change in this average. and you can see when it changed to blue, it's just showing that on average, the buying pressure is increased. When it's purple, it's, uh, it's showing you the selling pressure increase. And that's how I designed it right there. So just on the averages. And you can see how everything shifted from there. Same situation here. You're getting selling now on average pressure. 
you're getting all this buying and then all this selling and in some sense it kind of turned around here and then you can see where everything just started arranging this is what the nasdaq has been doing trading within this uh past range right here you can see how it got above this 50 right there and let me put those lines back on here before i go the iwm And this is Russia Trust uh, 2000, Russia 2000. So let me get rid of the drawings. And this is where we are on the 21 day box right here. It hadn't quite reached back down to this low, but it's trading right around this 21, 214 field right here. But it's definitely below its 21 day period uh, average right here. And we go to the, uh, this is what it did today. And this is where we are in a week. We were at the uh, 38.2 field on this range box on a weekly. And you can see this is our weekly. It keeps pushing back into this area and then getting pushed back down. So that's what we're looking, looking at on IWM. And most people are talking about the uh, technology set there. So let's go NVIDIA. This is stock right here is NVIDIA. I think I took everything off of it. No, I haven't taken everything off. And NVIDIA pays a dividend. I didn't know that. And you can just see how uh, it was just, it's been in this uptrend ever since, uh, what is October? NVIDIA has just been rocketing off. <laughs> You can see where it hit these uh, past uh, range box extensions. I just broke above those. And right now, the video was trading within this range right here. And it actually came to this range bottom, pushed back above on, on a lot of buying pressure. That's what this big green bar is showing you. But it wasn't able to hold this 500 level. But on average, this uh, line right here represents our 21-day um, average and our volume. So the 21-day period average is pushing up and volume is increasing as well on average. And if we go, this is what it did today. Look pretty weak or pretty bad today, especially after it broke below this box right here. But it was able to get back above VWAP, this purple line right here. But it wasn't able to sustain it, though. And I'm trying to get to the weekly. And this is what it looks like on a weekly. Same situation. This was those lows of October. And then it finally broke out of the box here at 193. And these two averages, this is the 50 and this is the 13. But it found this range right here. And right now, you can see the video is getting rejected at this range high or this previous high right here. And that's a pretty much the end of this video. I just wanted to do a, a quick sector recap and a update and show you some of the things that I've been working on, especially with that sector rotation. Um, percent change in the sector rotation uh, RSI indicator so if you haven't already please like and subscribe I really appreciate uh, you guys taking the time out to listen to what I had to say remember this is not an indication of the buy or sell anything it's just me sharing some information I gleaned from the market um, I really preach like I said I really am thankful for you guys taking the time out to uh this is what I had to say. Stay safe out there and God bless.